Are you ready to learn about the secret of the universe? Well, here is a model of the Earth. It's really a pencil sharpener. And the Earth is out in space, and it turns around on its axis one time in every 24-hour period. It rotates on its axis. I put a little sticky smiley face up here where we live in North America, and I put another sticky smiley face down here in South America. And you can see that in one day, the Earth rotates on its axis one time. Uh, and you can see that the Earth's axis is actually you can see that the Earth's axis is actually tilted. If we put an imaginary stick right through the center of the Earth, it would be pointing towards a star. And there's the star right there. Can you see it? We call that star Polaris, or the North Star. So the Earth is tilted on its axis 23 degrees towards the North Star. So we're missing an important part of our solar system. We're missing our Sun. But if the Earth was really this size, then the Sun would actually be 4.7 meters across in diameter. That's 14 feet. And it would be really hard to bring a 14-foot sun into the classroom so we could play with models of the Earth and the sun. <sighs> and so I have a tomato. Tomato's not 14 feet in diameter. It's a lot smaller, but it'll do. And also, if this were really the size of the Earth and the sun was really 14 feet in diameter, it wouldn't be this close. I did the math and found out it would actually be... 500 meters away, which is a half a kilometer, which is like a third of a mile. So the sun would be a third of a mile away, 14 feet in diameter, and that's just too difficult to play with in a classroom. So the sun's going to be really close, and it's going to be a tomato, and it's definitely not to scale, but we're still going to play with it anyway. So the Earth rotates on its axis one time in a 24-hour period, but it also revolves around the sun one time in a year, like that. It's really a very circular orbit, but if you look at pictures and books and stuff, it's kind of, you see it from a, uh, you see it from the side and it looks like a stretched out oval, but it's really not that much of a stretched out oval. It's really very, very circular. So if this is summertime in the northern hemisphere, and I know it's summertime because of the tilt of the Earth being sort of tilted towards the sun, the Earth is going to go around the sun counterclockwise, and it's also going to rotate counterclockwise. So if we look down on this, you'll see the Earth rotating counterclockwise and revolving. Oops revolving counterclockwise, always with the axis of the Earth pointed towards the star Polaris up there, the North Star. So, we talked about when you in Kentucky can see the sun, it's daytime for you, but when you look out at the night sky and you don't see the sun in the sky, it's nighttime for you and daytime for people over here in Asia. So that's day and night. And if you're looking straight up at the sun, it would be noon. And if you are a quarter of the way turned away, it would be 6 p.m. sunset. And you would look west to see the sun setting. And then it would be midnight for you. You'd be looking out at the night sky at midnight. And another quarter of a turn, it would be sunrise around 6 a.m. and you would look east. See, you would look east to see the sun in the sky. And it would be rising around 6 a.m. So we've got noon, 6 p.m., midnight, 6 a.m., noon. 
And I know that it's summertime in the northern hemisphere because of the way that the sun's rays are directly pointing towards people in the northern hemisphere, but they're very indirectly pointed at people in the southern hemisphere. So if we look at our little southern hemisphere guy down here, the sun's rays are very much at an angle, but they're very directly overhead for people in the northern hemisphere. Oops, turned my axis a little bit. So, summer in the northern hemisphere. So what season would this be? One quarter of a turn around. Summer, and then comes fall. And so this would be winter in the northern hemisphere. And we can see that in winter in the northern hemisphere, the sun's rays are very indirect in the northern hemisphere, but they're very direct in the southern hemisphere. So it's summer for the southern hemisphere, winter for the northern hemisphere. So after winter for us comes spring, and then we're back to summer again. Oop, keep moving my axis there. So now I'm going to talk about uh, phases of the moon. We talked about day and night, we talked about a year, and we talked about seasons. And so now we're going to talk about the phases of the moon. If the Earth was really this size, I did the math and found out that the moon would be a little more than a centimeter in diameter. And so I found something that was about a centimeter in diameter. It's a piece of dried up pineapple wrapped in plumber's um, tape. Pretty creative, huh? Um, but if this were the real size of the Earth and this were the real size of the Moon, it would not be this close. It would actually be about, let's see, where did I write it down? 1.3 meters away. So, oops, so the Moon would really be like way over here. But that's pretty hard to play with in a classroom, too. So we are going uh, to pretend this is over a meter away. We're going to pretend like this is 14 feet in diameter, and it's a third of a mile away. Oh my gosh, we're stretching here. But it's a model, and the model is definitely not to scale. So we know that the moon revolves around the Earth in one month, approximately. Things rotate on their axis, but things revolve around other things. The Earth revolves around the Sun. The Moon revolves around the Earth. So when the Moon is right here, and here we are in Kentucky, and it's, say, it's daytime for us, and we're looking at the Sun in the sky, the Moon is lit up on this side. We don't see the Moon. It's called a new Moon because we don't see it. And then when the Moon, let's see it, a little time goes by, and now the moon is a quarter of the way around the Earth. The right-hand side is lit up. The left-hand side is not lit up. And when we look outside around sunset, we see the right side lit up and the left side not lit up. That's called the first quarter. And then when the moon makes another quarter of a, oops, another quarter of a revolution, we have to wait until nighttime to see it. So when we look out at the nighttime, this side is all lit up from the sun, but this side is not. So that's a full moon. And then another quarter of a turn, and we can see the moon directly overhead around sunrise. And this side of the, of the moon is lit up, which from the perspective of the somebody on Earth, that would be the left side lit up. And that's the third quarter moon and then it comes back around to being a new moon again. Um, so I'm going to show you this from above. We've got new moon, first quarter, full moon, third quarter, new moon again. And when it's on this side of the Earth, it is appearing to get bigger and bigger and bigger until it's a full moon, and then it's appearing to get smaller and smaller and smaller until we can't see it, and it's a new moon again. We call this side waxing. Waxing means getting bigger, 
and we call this side waning. Waning means getting smaller. So this is a waxing crescent, so that's where you would just see a little sliver of the moon. And this is the first quarter, and then there's a waxing gibbous. That means it's almost a full moon, and it's getting bigger, and then there's a full moon. But then there's a waning gibbous, third quarter, a waning crescent, so we just see a little sliver of the moon lit up on the left, and then it's a new moon. And here with the, the waxing crescent, we see a little sliver lit up on the right. We see the moon lit up on the right, we see the full moon, we see the moon lit up on the left, and here we see a little sliver of it lit up on the left. Yes. Okay. How would it be if the Earth wasn't in summertime? What if the Earth was over here in the wintertime? How would that change for the phases of the moon? This would still be the new moon because it's in between the sun and the earth. It would still go counterclockwise around. This would still be the first quarter, full, third quarter, and new moon again. So it'd be waxing crescent, first quarter, waxing gibbous, full moon, waning gibbous, third quarter, waning crescent, new moon. Okay, I think that explains how would you use a tomato and a little earth model and a little white glob on a stick to represent um, the orbits of the moon and the earth and the seasons and the incidence of the sun rays and the phases of the moon and all that stuff.